Hey, what's up RC Nightmare fans? It's Brandon here for RC Nightmare, and today we got it. You asked for the X01. This is Traxxas brand new, just came out today, supercar. 100 mile an hour potential, out of the box, no mods needed. And with a caveat, you need an iPod or an iPod or an iPhone. But that being said, the model itself, box stock, is capable of 100 miles an hour. We haven't had a chance to look at this, so I'm not going to say any more until I get out of the box. Again, this is a long-awaited release from Traxxas. Our local uh, hobby store had it in stock today, so of course we got it for you guys. This is the blue model. We want to go a little different, not get the red that everyone else had. Go with something a little bit different for you. We're going to have, of course, running videos, tutorials, everything we can think of for this thing right away, because this is kind of a, I would call it a milestone in RC. I mean, there's really no one that's doing what Traxxas is doing with this right now. And so it's very neat to have something like this brand new before anyone else. Um, and I will talk through a bunch of the features that make this such a new release. As I struggle with the packaging here. All right, let's see how easy this thing opens up. There she is, brand new in the box. This is one seventh scale. So 7th scale is kind of something new I guess Traxxas has released. We're used to 8th scale, 10th scale, everything in between. 7th scale is just a little bit bigger, as you can see here. I mean, this is a pretty big beast. Let me get everything out of the box. Let's see how she's attached here. Some zip ties. Now, if you've owned an A-scale on-road car before, this won't seem very big to you. This might be kind of a standard. But if you've had 10th-scale on-road cars, this is a pretty big boy. I mean, considering the uh, just the tire size, which is a lot closer to, oh, I don't know, a 2.2 overall tire, that's a big, uh, big truck. All right, zip ties. Good old manual. Uh, they've loaded us up with some spare gears, tools, foam pieces, decals. That's not very interesting. This is what you guys want to see. The chassis. There's a lot of engineering that's gone into this car. A lot of engineering. It's not just throwing a big motor and hope it does 100 miles an hour. It's all about aerodynamics when you get this fast. And so I'm going to point out a few of those things right away. The front bumper. This plastic piece on the front bumper rests pretty much flush with the body. And it is a, it is a splitter of sorts. You want half the air to go over the top of the body and the other half to go on the bottom. The air that goes on the bottom would risk getting the thing airborne if they didn't create proper aerodynamics to compensate for that. So, on the back side here, we have rear diffusers. And diffusers are just a fancy way to lower the air pressure underneath the car. So once you start doing high enough speeds, and this thing's designed to go a little over 50 miles an hour, at least the suspension is designed for anything over 50, that the air pressure that's underneath the car will be lower than the air pressure on top of the car. So it's actually going to push it down. It's going to create a downward suction. So it's a little squirrely when it's under 50 miles an hour, but once you get over that speed, you get all, all the air flowing that it was designed for. It hunkers down and kind of suctions itself to the ground. It's a lot like an airplane wing, but upside down. A lot of people describe it as, you know, if I could drive this thing on a road upside down, it would probably stick to it at full speed. It's got so much opposite lift. And that's what you need to do speeds like 100, otherwise the thing would just take off on you. So again, these are, these are working air diffusers on the back side to lower the air pressure on the car. Get the air out fast enough and keep the high pressure on top to suck it down. On top of that, we got a giant NACA cooling duct here for the motor. So you can see this on the bottom. The special intake duct is designed to suck air in and blow it, again, over the top. You'll see it right over the motor. Without that, the motor would overheat at those kind of speeds. So they had to have it. And if we've seen as, as we've seen in reports in the past, is you, if you're overheating, you actually have to increase your speed just to increase the airflow and cool the motor down. It's all designed to do 50 plus, not anything under. So, you know, you got to have one or the other. There's always going to be a, a little bit of give and take to do those kind of speeds. So, you got to have the airflow over the motor. The motor itself is a, tra is a castle system. It's a big block motor. You look at this motor compared to the size of a standard castle uh, Mamba Monster that we see on the E-Revo and the E-Max. It's a little bit bigger can. The KV, I will find out for you guys. We will post it for you. I'm not sure at the moment. It's going to be a little higher up there to reach those speeds. Pretty high KV on the motor. The speed controller 
is that it's a Mamba Monster, but I guess you call it a Mamba Monster Extreme or a Mamba Monster Pro. This thing has, as you can see, it a bigger cap bank on it just to help handle these spikes and the current loads that we're going to be seeing out of this speed controller. Just a little bit bigger than the standard, standard Mamba Monster. And I guess we were hoping to see these being waterproof now, but to be honest with you, I don't see any hint that this is waterproof. We got an open speed controller. I don't see any coating on the circuit board. So don't drive it through any water. But again, if you're hitting water at these kind of speeds, what this car is designed for, you know, you got some other things to worry about. Besides that, let's go over some of the features that help this thing hold 100 miles an hour and be stable at those speeds. The tires themselves, very big. Again, these tires are, they look more like 2.2s. I'd say these are 2.8 inch rims if I had to guess. The tires themselves are pure slicks. There's no tread. These are belted tires. You guys are all familiar when you start doing high speeds with your trucks or cars, the tires start to expand and balloon. These actually have belts going through it, fiber belts that will keep the tire nice and square and solid so we get full traction and full contact patch to the ground. Same with the front tires, of course. In terms of suspension, we have full aluminum shock towers. Steering and caster blocks are aluminum on the front. Again, you can't have any slop in the plastic at 100 miles an hour. That's just not going to cut it. Same with the rear, aluminum axle carriers. And like I said, shock towers as well. These are GTR socks, so they are threaded aluminum shock bodies, titanium nitrated coated shafts. These are either the same shocks that are on the Jado or the E-Revo, and I'm not sure which. I want to say Jado. They look a little small to be E-Revo shocks, but beefy nonetheless. A little bit more dampening, a little bit bigger bore. Drive shafts are brand new. So now we have all steel drive shafts. These are steel splined with boots. And again, we'll get you close-ups of this, but all you got to know is steel splines are about the strongest thing out there. Splines are better than threads. And so Traxxas did away with the plastic that you see on the E-Revo and the E-Max. They went with splines because, again, when you're hitting those kind of speeds, you can't have extra rotating mass, vibration, slop in the system. That all lead to self-destruction. So nice solid pieces. We'll be curious to see how these hold up over time and hopefully, hopefully see these integrated in some of the new Traxxas models. They are CVDs on the outside and I think it's dog bones on the inside. So nice smooth power transfer there. The driveline itself is kind of based loosely off the Slash 4x4. Uh, we have Revo spec differentials. They look like Slash arms, maybe extended Slash arms. These would be like the original uh, Nitro Rustler arms. And then, like I said, the same differentials that are in the Slash. These are Revo spec steel ring and pinion gears. Center drive shaft is a lot like the Slash 4x4. It is aluminum. It's splined on the front and rear. There's no, there's no uh, out, out drives with dog bones that can loosen up over time with vibration. And it almost looks like it is, yeah, it is center supported. So they have bearings here and here helping to support the shaft. Again, when you're hitting those speeds, that's a lot of, that's a lot of rotation, a lot of RPMs. You can't have any vibration, you can't have any looseness. So they've center supported the shaft with two more bearings. So four bearings overall just to support the center drive shaft. The bottom plate is solid aluminum, this piece here. Again, you got to have the rigidity, the stiffness, as well as the top plate. You can't have any flex at those speeds or it's spell disaster. Giant foam bumper on the front. Hopefully you're only, need to, you're only going to be using this at slower speeds. I assume if you hit something at 100, there's not going to be much left of the car. But they do include it. This is a nice foam rubber bumper. It absorbs a lot of impact for you. I'm looking at the wheel hubs and nuts. This is a little bit different than what we usually see. I guess you could call it a 17 mil, and I think it is. Yeah, it might be just a little bit smaller. They might be like the 14 millimeter size that we see on the E-Max, the old style E-Max and old style E-Revo, but bigger than the standard 12 millimeter with nut. They've made it bigger. There's more surface area compressing the rim so you don't have any vibration. Again, high speeds, you gotta have everything planted. Everything has to be solid. Here we see more, these are gonna be just directional air diffusers. This is gonna help keep the body in place and all the air flow exactly where they want it. You can't just leave it open on the sides. So they have these big plastic plates to seal out the side of the car and keep the airflow right where they need it. Like aerodynamics is everything. And one of the bigger things that we've seen, this is a kind of a new thing in the hobby in terms of name brand cars, is the inclusion of LiPos out of the box. You can see they included two three cell, three cell 5,000 packs. These are, I believe, 25C. That's kind of a new thing. Not many companies will give you LiPos out of the box. I think Trax has included them because you really couldn't get away with anything less in a car like this, but it is nonetheless a milestone for RC to see a, a company include that kind of technology out of the box. Generally, you know, it's just nickel and hydrate or something simple to get you going. 
uh, modular one pinion and spur gear. So we've stepped up to true A scale components. The, if you look at the motor mount here, give you a view of that. Solid aluminum motor mount. Again, you're not going to get away with plastic at the kind of power and speeds we're handling. So it's a solid aluminum piece. They call it micro adjustable. I thought that might mean a set screw, and yes, there is a set screw. We love to see that. This is a new thing in RC. Axle release something like this too. There's a set screw that faces horizontally on the mount. So all you have to do is jam your motor up against the pinion spur, adjust that set screw to get the perfect mesh, and you can just tighten down your motor mount screws. Makes for very precise adjustment. And again, once we talk, we're talking this kind of power, these speeds, nothing out of whack will, will go. I mean, you'll, you'll, you're offering no vibration, no slop. There's no room for error at these kind of speeds and power. So everything has to be dead on. So that's reminiscent of that mount. They give you that very fine-tuned adjustment for it. You can see all the components are very centered on the chassis, low to the ground, you know, just for optimal weight displacement. The receiver box is waterproof. The servo is waterproof. This is the 2075 high-tech, high-torque digital waterproof servo that we see in the Slash and Revos and others. The radio system is new, and this is something to speak of. I'm sure all you've seen this online already too. This is based off Apple products. So you're gonna need an iPod or an iPhone, iPod Touch, or an iPhone to unlock the full potential of this radio system. And part of that potential is the 100 mile an hour rated speed. And so they only allow it to do about 60 out of the box, and you gotta register it, which I'm assuming is basically you agreeing to say, okay, I'm taking this car at life-threatening speeds and just to show you what I mean right on the box right on the front of the box and I'll, you've probably never seen this before in an RC car there's a nice big warning this product is not a toy risk of fire injury or death see warnings on end panel and that's not really a big joke again 100 miles an hour I'd say we got a good 10 pounds here maybe all up that could impale you that could definitely kill someone so they're not allowing it to do 100 out of the box. They want you to go online, register, agree that you're taking this up to a very dangerous level, and that's all integrated into the remote. So we're up to the TQI radio system. I'm guessing I stands for intelligent or whatever you want to name it. It's made for an iPod or I, iPhone, iPod Touch or iPhone. You slide your iPod Touch or iPhone in here, you download the app, and it turns this into a computer radio. Instead of having a screen built into the radio, your phone or your iPod Touch is that screen. You can save model memory, you can unlock higher speeds, and the biggest thing from Traxxas now is telemetry. Telemetry is feedback from the car to the radio. So I know you can maybe see this, I'll get on a close-up. Things like temperature, they have a temperature sensor wrap around the motor here, so it's gonna feedback the motor temp to you. Voltage, RPM, somewhere on, I'm guessing the spur gear, there's gonna be an RPM sensor that's gonna tell you the RPM you're spinning at or the overall speed of the car in general. But all these information feeding back to the remote again, through your iPhone or iPod Touch. So you're gonna to have to have that to lock the full potential of this radio. It's all built on the receiver and transmitter, so you really have no option unless you're gonna replace the radio with your own brand. Um, beyond that, there's one more thing, one more new technology I wanted to mention, and that is built into the spur gear. We're all used to slipper clutches on RC cars. It's adjustable disc brake that's always on, if you will, and that's what allows slip in the drivetrain in case you hit something hard, you accelerate real hard, Instead of snapping axles or stripping gears, the slipper clutch will slip under hard loads and save your transmission. On this car, they did away with that. Because we're on an on-road car, there's not the kind of loads we see on an off-road vehicle. They didn't see the need for it, and essentially all they did was put an industrial coupler in here. And when I say, what I mean by coupler is a rubber element that goes between the spur gear and the drive line or the drive shaft and allows a little bit of cushion. It's going to absorb hard impact. It's not going to slip but it's going to act like a pillow, a little cushion, and absorb hard impact, hard hits, and just the hard start of acceleration on the gears. So it'll be interesting to see how that holds up. Traxxas has done their homework on here, so I'm sure it'll be okay. But again, this is a brand new milestone in RC. We haven't seen much of this, if at all, in any other RC brands out there. So I'm interested to see how that works over time. So there you have it, guys, the X01. Of course, we'll have many tutorials coming up for you. Show you to hack the stock radio system if you don't have an iPod. Other things is too, running videos, of course. We're pretty excited to get this thing up to full speed. So please, if you like the video, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions at all, comment on down below. And while you're at it, visit our website, rcnightmare.com. There you have it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you soon.